Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are going to be diving into the realm of fashion once more, this time to explore the simple and often overlooked item known as hats. These splendid head coverings are featured frequently on many of our favourite characters, with the most notable one of course being the straw hat worn by none other than series protagonist Monkey D. Luffy. Which you know it's a pretty cool hat that may or may not have magical powers, but it's not going to be on this list. Sorry to disappoint any straw hat fans out there, but the world of hats is so much more diverse than a simple Mugiwara. In fact, the criteria for this list is entirely subjective and will be based on the hats that I enjoy most. Oh, and as per usual, all of the hats featured on this list must be canon, because filler hats are for losers. So with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to the top five hats in One Piece. Number five. Rob Lucci's Top Hat. We are going to kick things off in style with a suave, sophisticated formal head garb worthy of a true sir. With that said, this is some pretty serious hat we have on our hands here, with an exceptionally wide brim, especially for a top hat, which is chaperoned nicely by a similarly wide and very tall crown. The final feature of this head covering is a rather straightforward hat band circumnavigating the crown, much like the red line circumnavigates the world of One Piece. It's a very simple hat, really, certainly the most simple we are going to see on this list, but it just works so damn well. Not only that, but it can do so in a variety of different colours, with Rob Lucci himself displaying the headwear in both black and white incarnations. This hat is an instant addition of class, which you would think would only work particularly well with an accompanying suit and a martini in hand. However, Lucci's carpenter today certainly proved that this top hat is more than capable of handling itself on non-formal occasions. Simple, yet versatile, and well worthy of the opening spot on this list. Number 4. Zeph's Toque. Here we have an unusual piece of headwear donned by the famed chef of the floating restaurant, Baratier, Zeph. This gravity-defying masterpiece not only complements Zeph's character aesthetically by providing a counterbalance to his moustache, giving his design a pleasing sort of triangular shape and an almost fidget spinner-like formation really, but as a portion of uniform used in food preparation, its white colour is also used to convey cleanliness and the sheer extent of this individual toque certainly does portray that idea to a new extreme. Furthermore, it serves a practical purpose as most hats do, covering Zeph's head for sanitary reasons, such as not allowing loose strands of hair to become part of a customer's meal. Finally, the toque also serves quite a grand purpose in that it very effectively identifies Zeph as the head chef. Quite a lot for a fairly simple, yet overdone hat to achieve, but Zeph's toque is nothing short of glorious. Number 3. Law's Comfy Cap. Next up, we'll be featuring an item from patron of style, Trafalgar Law. I wasn't hugely convinced by the plumpy bowler hat of free time skip Law, and neither was Oda apparently, because two years later he emerged once more with this beauty. The hat, while carrying the same rocky breakup aesthetic pattern, which also translates into many of Law's other clothing items, remains. However, the shape of the hat is significantly more refined and suited to the wearer. We first encountered this hat during the punk hazard arc, and it looks like by far the best thing in the world to be wearing on the freezing portion of the island. Law's comfy cap looks warm and inviting, like sticking your head into a heavenly cloud. However, Law soon proved that winter conditions aren't the only climate this hat suits, as he donned it on Dress Rosa to great effect. And stylistically, it just works. The angled front brim is sized perfectly to be framed by the extended crown of the hat, and yet it's chunky enough to act as a nice focal point on its own. It's just a great cap. Comfortable, functional, and delightful. Number 2. The Crown of Soul King Brook. Generally, I would argue that a crown is not a hat, but in this case, that simply isn't true. This hat tells a wonderful rags to riches story, being quite a shabby bit of material adorned with a perfectly polished golden crown. This reflects Brook himself quite amazingly as a skeleton who came from nothing and went on to make it big as a global superstar. With that said, it's a hat that definitely only suits a few select individuals, being ones who can conquer the heights of outrageous fashion choices. The brim of the hat is actually wider than Brook himself, providing a sturdy base worthy of housing a monarchy, and the golden crown itself has a nice bit of detail in it with some ornate bands and hemispheres encircling it. Although I do kind of actually wish that these hemispheres in particular had a bit more variety in them in terms of colour, like if they were all some sort of gemstone like a ruby. It would have been nice for a bit of depth, but it works well enough as flat gold because the metallic nature at least provides some visual intrigue through its interaction with light. But as amazing as this mighty crown is, it is still dwarfed by one particularly phenomenal piece of headgear. Number 1. 
Ace's Cowboy Hat. Alright, this final entry kicks things up a gear because this offering from the once alive and well pork SD Ace is a wonderful combination of sleek, simple style with a flourish of detail. The flat orange colour is already a pretty adventurous choice and it acts as a wonderful canvas to the red beads and blue smiley faces that are really allowed to have their pop through colour alone. The blue of the smileys is a nice complementary colour to the dominant orange, however it wouldn't work anywhere near as well if not for the analogous colour choice in regards to the red beads. This red acts as a bridging colour, being right next to orange on the colour wheel and a mere one stop away from blue via the realm of purple. The result is a well blended accessorised hat that really has no right to work as well as it does given the odd elements at play here. We should also mention the strap which may not seem like much but it really adds that sense of cowboy authenticity that you don't really find in similarly style hats like Alveda's or Nico Robbins, both of whom are very cool hats that should be noted as honourable mentions for this list but uh, yeah didn't quite make it. But back to Ace's hat, this is a triumph of head coverings through masterful use of colour shape and texture. It is the result of simple elements combined with excellent design and certainly worthy of supreme recognition. And that pretty much does it for the top five best hats in One Piece. If you enjoyed this video then feel free to like, favourite or subscribe and if you are in any way keen on supporting this independent channel then please do check out my Patreon, Discord server or Twitter, the links to which are in the handy description below. And finally please do comment with your own favourite hats in the series. This has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.